Hi, everyone. Over the past decade, you would have heard about tools like Zoho, Jira, Atlassian, Slack, combined with connectivity solutions like Microsoft Teams, Google Hangout, Zoom. Together, these tools and solutions combined have given the white collar workers the ease to remotely collaborate, coordinate, and work with each other. How many of us have either heard or used these tools before? So we know what we are talking about, right? But if you try and think of a single such solution that gives this tech prowess that has existed for more than 10 years to the blue collar workers of the world, industrial workers working in key industries like oil and gas fields, mining, refineries, construction, policing, you'll fail to come up with a single such solution that gives this capability to the 78% of the global workforce. When we deep dived into it, the reason for this was very simple. If you visit any of these gas uh, refineries, rigs, or off-sites, you'll quickly realize, like you see in the pictures, that it's infeasible, in fact, practically impossible to use either a laptop or a mobile phone in these facilities. But all the tools that we've discussed about that have existed for so long have just been designed and engineered for these two devices. One is our laptop, and the second is a mobile phone. Let's take an example. Say I am a product manager working with a 200 member team at the Silicon Valley office of Apple. Using these tools and technologies, on a real time basis, at any point in the day, I can coordinate, collaborate, and work with my team members, be it India, Australia, or halfway around the world at their homes. At the same time, let's uh, switch the scenery from Apple in San Francisco to say the same product manager working at Total Energies in the Paris office. 200 people reporting into him, 80 of them working from office or their homes, but another 120 working on a live project that's going on offshore near Qatar. As of today, he has no way of connecting, reaching out to those 120 people and seeing what they're going through or suggesting them what can be done better. All of these people would be wearing PPE kits, gloves, would be covered in oil and grease. It's totally impractical to expect them to take out a laptop and dial a Zoom call to their supervisor asking for help. Pictures say the rest. So this seems to be a very big disconnect in an always connected world. Mind you, we had live connection with the Chandrayaan while it was landing on the moon. But a project manager cannot connect with his 120 team members just halfway around the Earth. So what do we do about it? So that's the disconnect that I and a couple of my team members uh, wanted to solve. And to solve that, we resigned from our high paying jobs back in 2020, in the middle of the first COVID lockdown, to find solutions for these. Let me ask you another question. How many of us want blood on our hands? You, sir, would you want blood on your hands? No. Ma'am, you? Apparently not. So none of us want blood on our hands. But reports tell us that 24% of hearing-related damages to people working in industrial environments happen due to workplace issues. A young engineer joins a top manufacturing company in the US, works there for five years, resigns, happens to get his body checkup done. It comes out that he has 5% partial hearing damage. 99.9% .9 cases, he'll end up litigating the employer and the insurer, insured the employer for a work, worker compensation management, will end up giving out a two to three million dollar check. But the sad part in this entire scheme of things is that neither the employee nor the employer and nor the actuaries of these insurance companies know whether that loss of hearing was due to actual workplace exposure 
that breached safety standards or OSHA guidelines in that industry? Or was it something genetic? Or was it because the employee liked listening to loud music at night? Similarly, 19% of accidents in workplace happen due to slips, loan workers, which can be avoided. But we are doing nothing about it. 2.93 million lives are lost every year because of workplace hazards. We don't want blood on hands, but what are we doing about it? This seems like a global challenge. A challenge for which solutions need to be found in an interdisciplinary manner to ensure the safety, connectivity and productivity of these 1 billion plus workers which represent 78% of the world's total workforce. So how do we solve this challenge? We tried solving this challenge by creating a complete end-to-end -end ecosystem for the global industrial workers. What does this ecosystem consist of? It consists of three layers, starting with the industrial IoT layer, where we invented a lot of devices that can typically replace the conventional decade-old laptop or a mobile phone in the industrial field. Then we went ahead and programmed a lot of software which can now connect these newly invented devices to the already existing systems that have existed for over a decade that all of us are used to using. And then the third layer becomes your existing systems which can now encompass the remaining 78% of the workforce using the devices in the first layer. So what are these devices that we can invent that can replace a laptop or a mobile phone? It has to be something that is very, very individual to the user. It has to be something that can be customized as per the user's need or the industry standards. It has to be something that does not pose any resistance to change for the existing blue-collar worker. It has to be something like a smart safety helmet. Till date, all the industrial workers are required and mandated to use normal helmets, hard hats we call them. Why not invent a smart hat? What will this smart hat do? This kind of a smart helmet or a smart hat will connect the workers to their supervisors anywhere in the world. This kind of helmet would have camera systems and noise sensors to ensure that all the exposures are being monitored on the individual levels on an ongoing basis for years, years to come where the user is using it. So if now that same engineer joins the manufacturing company, wears this helmet every day, his exposure, his environmental exposure, his noise exposure, sound, uh, pollution, is being monitored on a second by second basis, being benchmarked against the guidelines, safety standards, and in case there seems to be a breach, he's being alerted on a real time basis. All this is being logged and shared with the actuaries so that they can have a better understanding of what goes on ground in that specific industry. AI is being used in these helmets along with complete body parameter monitoring, a remo removable battery system, one of the world's smallest gas sensors to ensure they become the safest devices on, that can go on your head. But what else will go in creating such a device? We need to ensure two more things. One, that it indeed stays the safest device that you ever used, both physically and RFIs. To do that, we need to have two more innovations or inno inventions that did not exist. One is we need to ensure that the battery that goes in powering these devices cannot catch fire. So independent of the battery chemistry or the BMS, we invent a circuit that consists of a capacitor and a piezoelectric cylinder containing a fire dowsing liquid. Such a capacitor would 
short itself in case the battery is breaching any of the benchmarks, either stress or temperature, ensuring that the piezoelectric cylinder bursts open and makes or renders the battery useless. That ensures that the helmet is physically safe while keeping you safe. The second is the RF exposure. You would wonder, using phones gives us a kind of a issue in terms of radiation. So why would I want to use a 4G or 5G connected helmet on my head for eight hours? To address that, we make the walls of the helmet double walled and layer the inside of these walls with a very fine silver cloth, essentially making the dome a Faraday cage, impenetrable to the radiation, no matter within the device's communication or surrounding. That ensures that the industrial worker is safe, that those 2.93 million deaths can be avoided. We then superimpose this technology with an air hat concept. What would an air hat do? Another WHO report tells us that 4.2 million deaths happen every year because of exposure to polluted air. So we have taken care of accidents, we have taken care of exposures which can be avoided, but what about environmental factors? So we overlay that with the air hat technology, which basically sucks in polluted air, asbestos laden, high AQI air from around you, pushes it onto your head so that all the moisture that is building up in high temperature environments get evaporated. So there's no microbial buildup on your head. And then that sweat laden air is passed through, through a five step filtration process in a removable cassette system to ensure you have 99.9% .9 purified air in a contactless manner. This airflow can be adjusted to the contours of your face using a switch similar to what you have on top of your airline seats. So this combined ensures that the industrial workers now have access to those 10 years of lag that they have been missing out. But not all workers work in heavy industries and not all workers are required or mandated to wear helmets. So what we do now, we invent another device, a device that we like to call the sleeve, a very lightweight device that has the capability of sliding over any cap and making it a smart cap. So this would be a subset of the industrial heavy duty helmet, which was supposed to replace the laptops in the field. If the smart hat would be a laptop, this becomes your phone with audio video calling, multiple functions and tactile switches for dial 911 or call 100 or call 100 to support. AI on edge, GPS, speaker system, tracking system. So these two devices combined take care of the, most of the industrial workers. But if we go back to our analogy of white collar workers or software engineers compared to the industrial workers or project managers, the software engineers always know where the data is. They know how to keep it safe. They encrypt it, they track it. What about industrial workers, project managers? Do they know where the physical assets are at any given point of time? How do they track it? How do they ensure that it is always safe? So we invent a third device and we call it the locator, a smart lock which is capable of linking to the low orbit satellites, ensuring that no matter where your goods are, at any point of time, the supply chain managers, the project managers, the industrial workers have a real time tracking of where the goods are, whether they are being tampered with or not, what is the integrity of them, what's their ETA, the geolocation, geofencing, route planning. All of these tools combined give us a hope that we can make an industrial revolution that depends on connecting these highly qualified industrial workers working in highly cash industries, but who have been deprived of technology. 
for years and years. So this gives us a glimpse of hope and something to look forward to in the future, a future that is more safer, connected and secure for these 1 billion plus people. The only question that remains now is what's next? Thank you.